This may be an odd way to start out a somewhat video tutorial to up-level your sewing, but I wanna be honest, this is coming from someone who's been sewing for about the past year and a half, and these are just things in these early stages that I have learned along the way that today I want to share with you. And if you have been sewing for many, many years, you have tips to add or share, please feel free to do so in the comments. I know I would be appreciative and maybe others watching would also appreciate it. So stay tuned, I'm about to break it on down. Hello and welcome back to Dining Creativity. I'm Rachel Ann and I'm here to share with you all things my sewing journey, the good, the bad, the ugly, and a few things that I've learned along the way. So today I just wanna jump right into this video and get started with probably a very basic tip, but one that absolutely changed the sewing game for me. I did not realize how important this first tip really is until I started actually doing it, and that is to iron and press everything from the sewing patterns themselves. You know that they come out in that very thin tissue paper like quality, but making sure to iron those so that they are completely flat. And as you are sewing, press everything, press your seams, press the fabric prior to sewing it. So whether it is ideally before you even cut out the fabric, the pattern pieces, you've already sewn the fabric so that it's laying nice and flat and so that it's going to give you a very accurate portrayal of the pattern piece itself. Sometimes if there's a wrinkle in the fabric, it can add on a little bit of extra fabric. Then you put the whole, all the garment pieces together and you notice that one side is a little bit longer than the other or the shoulder is a little bit hanging off more than the other side. So that first step is so vitally important to, before you even get started with the actual sewing, iron and press everything. It really does make a massive difference. This next tip is also of the basic level. I'm just, again, I don't wanna portray myself to be something that I'm not over here, but when I started using these tools, again, the changes in the quality of the production of the garment were exponential. Not to sound dramatic, but it really was so helpful invest if you're going to invest in anything again this is my own personal opinion here but the game changed for me when i bought a self-healing mat and a rotary cutter and i'm going to share with you the package that i used i don't have any affiliation with this product on amazon but it was just a great full set that came with plastic clips several different blades for my rotary cutter and then I separately bought an extra large rotary, not rotary map, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but an extra large self-healing mat where instead of using scissors to cut out my pattern pieces, which can give a little bit of that uneven pattern piece production, it very much cut down on any uneven edges or anything of that nature. Truth be told, when I first started sewing, I was not even using weights to weigh down my pattern pieces on the fabric. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just trying to sew. But as soon as I started adding in fabric weights to put down on my pattern pieces, got my self-healing mat, and then got a decent rotary cutter, like I've already said, the game changed. Now, here's the thing. If you have a fellow frugal heart like I do, and you like to try to make your money stretch, there are ways to do it. And so I just went to Home Depot and got the bolt and washer lock sets. This is what I've used for months, and it's just heavy pieces for the for weighing down the pattern pieces on top of your fabric when you are cutting them out just these heavy different washers nuts bolts and it works like a charm i have looked at really cute fabric weights on amazon and it was you know 17 to 29 dollars for a set of six whereas 
if I'm not mistaken, this was either $3.97 or $4.97 and it came with quite a few 12 pieces. So I just line all of these on my fabric and start using my rotary, rotary cutter and I'm good to go. So I would highly recommend just investing in these supplies. Again, I know that this is basic level here, but it really does make a huge difference and it even makes sewing more fun because you've got the tools to create a beautiful garment. Okay, so this third tip, I'm gonna be honest, I am a mental health therapist by by trade, by day, I guess you could say, a sewist by night, by by hobby, so to speak. I love creative outlets. And so this, this next one is a little bit of the emotional process behind sewing or starting really any new hobby or endeavor. And that is to be patient with yourself and the overall process of sewing. None of us are perfect in the beginning or, and if you are, that is amazing. You know, teach me your, your tricks of the trade over there, but be patient with yourself. If something doesn't turn out right, don't give up hope. Go ahead, and this leads me into my next tip, experiment on inexpensive fabrics that you're not worried if you botch up a huge $3 piece of fabric that you got from Goodwill. That is just the best strategy, in my opinion, when you're starting out. I even went to Hobby Lobby and they had a huge sale on their cotton fabric. I think it was $4 a yard. I bought two yards of that for eight bucks and sewed up one of my first dresses I ever sewed. Was it pretty? Um, it was it was okay, I was very proud of it, <laughs> but compared to maybe how my sewing is now, it's night and day. And But it, it didn't make me feel bad because I had not invested a lot of money into that piece of fabric. So trust the process, be patient with yourself, be patient with the process, and if you, even start to get frustrated, I feel like that's always a good indication to walk away. For me, when I start a project, I am a completionist at heart. I sit down, I wanna just carry it out all the way through, but if I slow it down, take breaks, get something to eat if I need to, go sit outside for a little bit, relax, enjoy my day, go take care of other things I need to do and then come back, it also seems to produce a better quality product because you're not frustrated, you're not disappointed, insert any emotion that can come in there and kind of wreak a little bit of havoc when you're new at something. This was actually a tip that a lovely viewer gave to me and I'll forever be grateful to you. Um, again, you don't know what you don't know and it is to measure the pattern pieces even before you cut them out because I typically vacillate between a size 10 to maybe a size 14 when it comes to the big four patterns. And it can definitely give a good half inch if you go with a certain size and then you account for the seam allowance and you could have up to an inch and a half maybe of extra fabric that the garment comes out too large for you or alternately, maybe it's too small. So even just taking that measuring tape when you've got the pattern piece that's not cut and you lay it all out and measuring how everything is going to size up when it's sewn up, even reducing that half inch or five eighth inch seam allowance that those big four patterns give you, it really is amazingly helpful. So when I first started, I was definitely sizing up and feeling frustrated because I would have to take those garments in. It added on a lot of extra time. The fitting was a whole thing in and of itself. If you relate, please feel free to share so that I know I'm not the only one. And so then I just got to the point where I got that comment and I, I thought, well, duh, why haven't I been doing that? And it was super helpful. It was definitely given to me in such a kind way, which I appreciate. But ever since I started measuring those pattern pieces, the garments really do come out pretty much very well fitting me versus having to go in and do alteration after alteration. Okay, this next one, bear with me. It's also a little bit um, therapist-y, but I always think about this when I sew, how sewing in many ways 
for yourself, garments for yourself, it's an act of embracing your body where it's at and <laughs> enjoying the clothing that you're making for yourself. I don't believe that this is a time to size down and then try to make yourself fit into it. No, this is a great time to get really comfortable with your measurements and also knowing that your measurements aren't gonna be the same as anybody else. And that is okay, that you're able to, with sewing, to create garments that actually make you feel really good in your own skin, they make you feel good in your own body, and then you walk away knowing that you created that garment. So I can't stress that enough. Again, I know that's a little bit um, of the emotional side of sewing, but I've always noticed with any hobby, it can elicit some emotions of frustration or irritability, either a person's being too hard on themselves and thinking, why can't I just catch on to this already? Or I don't like the way this turned out you know, whatever the case could be. And so I just had to put that out there that this is a great time to take those measurements, get used to your size and be okay with that. This is definitely the opportunity where, again, you get to size and make garments that are custom tailored to your body. Whereas if you go to a store, we are really honestly super limited on the sizing that is even offered in the store. And you may be one size in one store and a totally different size for a different brand. So, but I just had to throw that in there. Let me know what you think. I would be interested to hear if you've had that experience of enjoying being able to actually produce and wear a garment that has been sized to fit you well. This next tip is definitely one I have also learned along the way, and it is to pair the correct needle weight with the correct fabric. So when I initially started sewing, I was using the standard heavyweight needle. Uh, to me, it seems like it's heavyweight. I think it was uh, 90. Um, I can't remember the, the bottom number, but at 90 and using that to work with silky fabric and it absolutely left holes in the garment and even in my opinion, the thread tension, that was something I had to play around with and do some research on. So that's kind of a secondary tip. Make sure you're using the correct thread tension, especially for silky fabrics, because if not careful, if that tension is too high or too loose, it makes the ripples in the fabric. And same with the needle weight. I'm looking over here because I still have my sewing machine up over here, um, but, it's very important. So if you're gonna sew with silky fabrics, you're gonna probably want a lower needle weight. And there are some great resources and articles out there that share the different weights of needles that work best for different fabrics and different garments. Last but not least, I'll round us out with just a little bit more of the kind of encouragement in this process because I certainly had to tell this to myself. Uh, I am the kind of person I just jump into a hobby or jump into something and then figure out how to do it from there. There are pros to that. There are cons to that, as we all know, probably. But my tip is just so anyways, keep calm and so on. If you really love this as a hobby, whether it's sewing a quilt, sewing baby clothes, sewing aprons for loved ones, insert whatever, sewing men's clothes, it could be any variety of things that you're working on. Keep sewing, learn from the mistakes that you make because again, no one is perfect at anything when they first start out. And sewing, I've learned, is such a great practice in honestly stress relief and mindfulness and patience because it's in a way, I've always been a painter. It's kind of like painting. When you first start working on the canvas, it's a blank canvas. You're adding all these different layers to create an image. Sewing is so similar. You're taking a huge blank canvas of fabric and cutting out all these wild, weird looking pieces to mash them together to create a beautiful garment or product. And so just learn from the mistakes, keep sewing, 
and, and know that it's okay to make those mistakes. From all the mistakes I've ever made, I made a lot when it came to inserting the facings into shirts and I didn't know what to do with them. And I would fold them and bunch them up and it just looked so funky. I still wore the clothing because <laughs> I was so proud of it because I made it, but it was not where I am now. And it's been a year and a half. I still have so much to learn. So this is really my first video on up leveling your sewing game to begin with, but I hope that in some way it's been helpful for you. If you've been sewing for a really long time, please don't hesitate to share your thoughts on different techniques. If you are newer to sewing like I am, I would also love to hear from you. But as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this video and happy creating.